you guys have had just today alone back in the Well, in one day, we had four practices. So, <laughs> in 1970? Uh, 70. Yeah, 70, yeah. Surely came in in 70, and uh, it was very similar to what's happening right here in Miami right now because they, there was a lot of talk before Shula signed that there was going to be a addition named um, Coach Bear Bryant was going to be the head coach. And it really came down to the final throws of the contract. It really looked like we were going to have Coach Bryant as a head coach. And then it blew up. Then there was fire and smoke, and everybody was in a turmoil. Who were we going to get all of a sudden? And all of a sudden, Shula comes walking out of the smoke. And when this all happened here in the last year of all the turmoil that you've seen, it occurred to me that's kind of similar to 70 in some respects. And all of a sudden, a new head coach steps out. A young head coach. Yeah. A young head and, coach. And, and a guy that's just as intense. In a little bit, I've been around him. Chicken skirt. Correct me if I'm wrong. But he has the intensity. I don't think he's as vocal. As what you, I don't think nobody is vocal. <laughs> <laughs> I think Mike McDaniel walked over to say hello to some of you guys. I don't know if you guys were there. Um, what did he have to say? I didn't see it. No. I didn't either. I didn't. Larry, I wanted to ask about uh, which Larry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I apologize. I apologize. Okay. Uh, uh, Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the approach this team's going to have about running the football, it's going to be a, a, a big priority, obviously, under Coach Daniel and some of the personnel they brought in. Have you had a chance to look at all that? To talk about strategy from 50 years ago till today is kind of crazy because the rules have changed so much. It's like day and night. Yeah, but the intensity and whether or not the players rise to what he wants of them. In other words, they realize what he's talking about. And don't go, to quote Don Shula, don't go through the motions. That still applies today. You know, the, the enthusiasm for playing football should come after God and family, and that should be the third thing. Remember Shula talked about yeah. that? And, that, you know, when I spoke with him this morning, I didn't get into all of that because that's Shula's argument. But what I did talk about was not going through the motions because that's the important thing. The people that are gathering here, the head coach and the group that's gathering, shows a lot of potential. If they listen, they're sincere, they carry it to the field, I think they'll be successful. If they don't, they won't. I don't think that's changed since Shula. Gentlemen, we, uh, we still are waiting for Zach Thomas to get in. Your thoughts on Zach Thomas not being selected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well as Asking me. Both of you. Oh, well, you know, Zach had a hell of a career here in Miami, and uh, eventually he will get in. It might not be ne this year. It wasn't this year. It might not be next year, but he had a heck of a chance to get into the Hall of Fame because he deserves it. Another guy Larry, that's not possible. Can you talk about a little bit about just how Larry Little and you guys met at a Buick dealership? How you guys <laughs> That's in the new book I just put. <laughs> I did the memoir. I didn't put it in my new book. <laughs> 1969. I was uh, woke up in the hospital with a cross painted on my head where they were going to drill if they didn't if I didn't wake up and become conscious. You know, so my career was kind of like you know next to being over with. So I'm healing up from that and I'm looking for a new offensive lineman. And I go down to Edlin Buick and uh, had never. Didn't know anything about Larry at all. Went to go in the door, and there's this great big guy coming out the door, and we're doing this with the door, and then we open the door. And I, I didn't say, hi, who are you? I didn't say, I said, who do you play for? <laughs> and he said, I introduced myself to him, though. <laughs> anyway, I, I, when he said that he had an interest in the Miami Dolphins, I knew, you know, right then. I just... Looked at him, spoke to him for a short time. I went right down to Joe Thomas's office, which uh, 330 Biscayne Boulevard, uh, third floor, fifth floor, floor up there. 11th floor. And I went into Joe's office and said, did the name Larry Little mean anything to you? He said, yes, I've been talking to him. We just about got the deal. I said, Joe, I don't know how to tell you this other than to say this. If you can sign him, that's great. If you don't, we're on the third floor, and you better learn how to friggin' fly. <laughs> <laughs> and I meant it. <laughs> And he signed him. I told him, do whatever you got to do. And, uh, well, it goes into, you, know, you can read the book to find out. But it, it I, I, he was so happy that we had met. And already, he already, Joe Thomas knew at that time that he had Larry 
just about there and was just going to, he was going to finalize the deal. It's a great thing for you because it helped, helped your career, Larry's career, so you are two Hall of Famers. My <laughs> headaches went away <laughs> when he showed up. They had Kuchenberg, Langer, Kendick, you had a bunch of Cruzan, you know, North Norm Evans. When they talk about being inducted to the Hall of Fame, when you're power running back, you may go in the Hall of Fame, but those people put you there, and they definitely put me there. Larry, you mentioned Bob Kuchenberg. What can you say about his ability as a player, but also his leadership skills that, that makes him you know, Hall of Fame candidate? Well, we went undefeated. That pretty much says it about all my offensive line right there. I mean, uh, what more can you say than the only perfect season? Well, with Cooch and Lang and myself, uh, we were the best, best middle in the history of the NFL. It would mean a lot because we would be the only team in history to have two guards and the center on the same team in the Hall of Fame. What's the significance to you guys for 50 years now since the 72 season? Well, being named the number one team of all time uh, kind of <laughs> says it all. It. It's this much difference, but it might as well, that might as well be the universe. It either is or it isn't. We're the only team that's done it. We're standing on top of the rock. New England came close. Great, that's a handshake, but you're still back there. We the were often team. imitated but never duplicated. Do you see any of, uh, of this year's teams as a threat to your uh, undefeated mark? If it is, I hope it's the Dolphins. I was going to say, what team? <laughs> Anything else, yeah. fellas? Hey, what, 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 All right. What was today like? What's, what's the day like today like for you guys? You know, Hot. To be around. This, <laughs> to be around. This, and all the guys that maybe you haven't seen. To go through a team meeting, talk a little bit in a team meeting, witness a practice and so on. Yeah. There's a lot of similarities, a lot of common ground, but the rules have changed a great deal. As far as what players are keyed in to do what things, it's, it's a great deal different. But the sincerity is the same. The will to win remains the same. And I think that uh, that we can talk about. The strategy on how to do it, we're miles away from where they are. And no pads. <laughs> I mean, he come on, no pads? <laughs> but that's not just here, it's all over the league. You no know, pads this time of the year, you know. And you, won't, you like to think that's why so many guys are injured during the season. So you, you, you met with the team and also with McDaniel, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We talked about a whole plethora of things and met with Coach uh, earlier and went through it. And we talked a lot about, you know, what it was, how it compared. I really initiated the thing because I said to him, you know, there's a lot of comparables. And he was going, how? And I started with 70 and the coaching uh, controversy and all of a sudden Shula's our coach and then the break-in period and the adjustment and well, then uh, the sincerity. The biggest difference is we only had six coaches. <laughs> what do you have now? Twenty-five coaches. <laughs> twenty-five coaches. Can you imagine how good we would have been with twenty-five coaches? <laughs> I can imagine a lot of things. How good we would have been with twenty-five coaches isn't one of them. <laughs> Any comparisons to Paul Warfield and Tyreek Hill? I don't see any. Uh, to me, if Paul were playing today, he would still be if not the best, one of the best receivers to ever play the game. In the type of offense that they're running today, there's no comparison. There would have been no comparison to Paul. Paul was the classiest, smoothest hmm. person, as well as player that I've ever been around. Yeah. He was class on the field and he was class off the field. No doubt. And he would hit you. <laughs> so I'm doing it a couple of times to a couple of people. Matter of fact, I started to say ask Ray Nitschke, but Nitschke's gone. <laughs> I saw Paul Clark now. Paul was a great blocker also. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't afraid to do this. He'd get in there. Zalek, your, your tweets during games suggest that you're really into it when you're watching Dolphins on NFL Sunday. Oh, how could you not be? Uh, so are, are you like a fan there on the couch where you actually grow irritated if something bad happens and you're really, really thrilled if they do a, a huge play or, or get a win? I expect them to do really well. It's upsetting when they don't. And I, uh, well, you're still feeling attachment. Would you go along with that, Chick? Yeah, when you play for a team as long as we did, although I played a little, a little longer than Song did, 
you still have that feeling that you want your my team too. Yeah. Want that team to win. Are you in Alaska or Ohio during during football season usually? We just sold Alaska. We bought a place in North Carolina years and years ago when Chick and I were playing for the Dolphins in the early 70s. I had an A-frame up in North Carolina. I went and got that. I've got grandchildren and great-grandchildren now, and it's too far to bring all of them and too far to come down and visit all of them, so we just moved down to North Carolina. So you're done with Alaska for good then? No, I still go back every summer for a while and fish, but uh, did sell that property up there, yeah. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so All right, Baron. Thank you. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.